Harley-Davidson engines have been huge for a very long time. There were 1200cc Harleys in the 20s. That's the 1920s. By the 30s, Harley had a 1300cc motor. Now between that time and the 90s, the engines improved in design and horsepower but not much in displacement because in the 90s the 1340cc or 80 cubic inch Evo Big Twin was still powering all of the big Harleys including the giant dressers. That engine spun the dyno to about 50 horsepower stock. Then near the end of the decade the displacement wars began. Kawasaki and Suzuki introduced engines bigger than the Evo, Victory came in near the end of the decade with the biggest V-twin to date, and Harley came out with the 88 cubic inch twin cam. In the 2000s the competition kept getting bigger and so did Harley, growing to 96 cubic inches, then 103 and 110, and then 107 and 114 in the current models with the CVOs rocking the 117. But bigger is always better in American motorcycling and it may again be time to make a jump and discard that 107. Why? Stay tuned and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you find this content valuable. Just to be clear, I'm exaggerating. The idea that a 107 cubic inch or 1750 cc motorcycle engine which churns out over 108 pound feet of torque is small or not powerful enough to power what is essentially a cruiser would blow the mind of a Harley rider of 20 or 30 years ago. People used to spend big money on aftermarket goodies to get their Harleys up to the lofty power and torque output of today's stock hogs. But alas, the world goes on and comparisons are made with other modern motorcycles, not with Harleys of 30 years past. And despite the fact that Harley Davidson is still unquestionably the sales leader in the world of big American cruisers, Indian is knocking on that door. And while most Harleys are sporting the 107 and 114 Milwaukee 8 engines, the Indians one up them with 111 and 116 cubic inch thunderstrokes. Now this actually does not have a great deal of meaning in terms of real world performance. I've ridden all four of the engines in question. They all perform very well and are more than capable of making you go fast. And while the bigger variants do feel a bit stronger, a little extra displacement does not make a vast difference. The real difference is in perception. A bigger number stamped on the side of the motor has a psychological effect on customers. Most of the riders of these bikes are guys, and to guys, bigger is always better. Is this true? If it was, then the Indian Challenger's liquid-cooled 108 cubic inch motor wouldn't be kicking the crap out of every other Harley and Indian Big Twin. Obviously, modern tech like liquid cooling makes a bigger difference to performance than a few more cubes. But guys are guys, bigger is always better. So Indian provides the illusion that they're giving you more bike, and that presents a problem for Harley. They are the leaders and as such shouldn't be seen reacting to the threat of a smaller rival. But that rival is coming after them with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch, and there is one thing that Harley can do to turn the tide before Indian goes medieval on their ass. They can turn the tables by sliding both engines up in displacement. They can phase out the 107 by cutting the bikes with that engine or replacing them with the 114, and they can bump up the 114s or at least the specials to the 117 motor. In a way, this has already begun. Last year the Street Bob got a bump in displacement becoming the Street Bob 114. The price only went up by $400 on a bike with a bigger engine and nicer paint job, which now by the way comes with a passenger seat and pegs. And given how much value the US dollar has lost this year due to inflation, you're literally getting a 2021 Street Bob 114 for less money than a 2020 107. I know that I've criticized Harleys on this channel for being overpriced before, but that's actually a good value. If I was in the market for a Milwaukee 8 bike, I'd probably get this one and dress it up West Coast style. Additionally, in 2022, Harley will not bring back the Slim or the Sport Glide, both 107 powered bikes. And the Heritage Classic, Road King, Street Glide and Road Glide all come in 107 and 114 versions. In fact, the only purely 107 powered Big Twin left is the Softail Standard, a bike that could be bumped up to 114 the same way the Street Bob was last year or kept as the only 107, a reasonably priced big twin option for the everyman. So by bumping up the 107s to 114 and the 114s to 117, Harley could effectively turn the tables on Indian and also have an excuse to raise prices slightly past those of the equivalent Indian models which are currently on average a tad more expensive. 
The truth is that a 114 is not much more expensive to manufacture than a 107, so the upgrade won't be costly for the motor company, but it would be a gesture of goodwill to consumers. We're providing good value for your dollar, it would say, and it wouldn't hurt that this would make the Harley models slightly bigger than their Indian counterparts. Of course, Indian also already has a response in the form of its Power Plus liquid-cooled engine which is more powerful than any stock Harley. They are also working on a new Batwing fairing bagger called the Pursuit, check out my video on that in the top right corner, which will use that motor, so it would be wise of Harley-Davidson to make a move soon. Now some will say that the 107 is a fine motor and that I'm hating on it for no good reason, and I agree that it's a great motor. The truth is that when I rode the 107 back to back with a 114 I could barely tell the difference. Yes, the 114 is a bit faster, but the 107 is pretty zippy and would equal or even surpass the 114 with the addition of a stage 1 kit. Considering the fact that a current Road Glide 107 is $5000 US less expensive than a Road Glide Special 114, or a Street Glide 107 is $5100 less expensive than a Street Glide Special 114, it would be less expensive to get the 107 and put a stage 1 on it than to buy the 114, and it would sound better. So I like the 107, but if I had to choose between a 107 and a 114 with the 114 costing $400 more, I'm getting the 114 every day of the week. And some of those 114s could steal sales from some of Indian's 111 Thunderstroke bikes. Finally, the question arises, what to do with the CVOs? Bumping the 114 bikes up to 117 will give them the same motor as the top of the line Harleys. Well, put a bigger engine in the CVOs then. Why not a 121 CVO line? Or, dare we dream, a 131? If Harleys are indeed as premium as CEO Johann Zeiss would want us to believe, then they should come with the most premium motors too. I have to say, I like the idea of offering the bigger mills for close to the same price. In fact, I can't think of anyone who would dislike it except for folks who bought a 2021 CVO. So I'm not a 107 hater, but progress is progress, and if you can offer a 114 for almost the same price, why not do it? What do you think? Would you be more likely to buy a lower price Harley if it came with a 114 instead of a 107? Or how about a special with a 117? Or did you just buy a new 107 and will be severely pissed off if Harley now offered the same bike in a 114 for close to the same price? Share your comments below, thanks for watching and ride safe. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.